you create new things because something for you is failing. Right? I created Vox because I thought I was failing to do the job I wanted to do for the audience. I was failing to give them the information they needed to follow the story that was ongoing now. Um, although I do want to, uh, we've been talking a little bit about definitions of disruption. And so I'm about to be in the worst possible way that guy. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and because I think there's one interesting thing here that'll come into play when we talk about Trump. So his original theory of disruption from this guy Clayton Christensen, who's a, a Harvard business professor. And his idea of it, which I've also thought is really interesting, is a disruptive, a dis we used to have a word just say like competition, right? Sometimes you just come and outcompete your competitors. Your restaurant is better, right? And that's a thing. And then disruption has this amazing quality where you start down market, right? Where you go beneath your competitors to a part of the market they didn't think was that important, to something they didn't think was that interesting, that doesn't have a high profit margin in it. The classic example is steel. There were the, the steel mills that served high class customers, and then these I'll forget the terms, but these mini mills came in and they began doing this kind of steel that the, the big players kind of look down upon. And you build from there, you build up, you, get, uh, you, you, you begin to understand the market, you begin to build a base. And the problem for, for the big competitors is that you're always so locked in to your top customers that then you can't change, mm -hmm. right? The thing is that you know how to do something, you have a culture of doing something, and then you can't move because it, it actually wouldn't be a good idea for you. It's rational not to change your business. It's rational not to chase the new thing. You'd piss everybody off. You don't have the staff. You, you have all these relationships. And so I think all this does come out of not just one's individual failures, but somebody has to see somewhere that somebody is being failed, right? That people, that we are failing to treat folks who come into the restaurant well that we are failing to treat people who want to buy eyeglasses like they shouldn't be ripped off. Um, <laughs> like we're failing to treat people who don't know enough about a news story like they're also smart and want to know, mm -hmm. right? That we're intimidating them and we're leaving them behind because we are fighting each other for awards. And it's not that interesting to answer really simple questions. And so there's some piece of it where, and, we have failed at a million things at Vox, and I've failed at a million other things, and like my shirt has stains on it. I've like failed at very basic parts of the day, <laughs> like, just today. Um, but, but in some sort of broader sense, you, there is a lot, there's constantly a lot we are doing wrong. And I think a really powerful driver is just, in a way that is not the funnest way to live life, just feeling a little bit pissed off about it all of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree with that, Anjali? I, I don't know if it's um, I, maybe not as pissed off <laughs> as us, runners, but I think there is, I, I totally agree with, with everything else that he said, apart from the pissed off part. I think it's also just a willingness to be uncomfortable is part of, mm -hmm. of it too. So it's not even just recognizing the failures in the system or whatever problem you're trying to solve, but willing to live in those questions, be uncomfortable, um, not know the answer, but continue to research it and like sort of dig in deeper to try to find a solution um, is part of it too.